thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak to the group um, a little bit about my research that I did for, for the Masters. And I want to just spend a few minutes, um, I want to include a focus on the process of doing the Masters programme as well as on the results of it. Um, because looking back, as Marion said, I was in the first cohort, so I've had time to think about it and reflect on it. So I was coming from a science discipline into something that was um, new to me. Um, about 15 years ago, I thought, um, my teaching needs a little bit of zing, it needs something. I, I seem to be doing the same thing every year, and is this what it's all about? So I took a course in teaching and learning in higher education. Um, it wasn't available here, I had to do it externally. I did it with the Open University in the UK. And I didn't think I would get a lot, of, a lot out of it, but it actually transformed um, the way I was thinking. It turned my kind of workplace world upside down. And it's still affecting me today. So as Marion said, um, we, there were a group of us interested in getting the accredited programme brought in-house for staff here because we, we understood the journey and the transformation that it could make. Um, so we had in this room probably 10 years ago today almost, um, 70 people interested, 60 signed on and 58 completed as you said. 97% retention, so that's really good. Um, so what happened next for me after I'd done the uh, first part of this uh, accreditation, the certificate? I found I had challenges in my teaching. I, and, and one particular challenge um, was that the first year science curriculum, the students had to take eight separate courses from six different departments. And the staff were all saying, the students are not transferring their skills from one course to another. And even the assessment we did was just making these silos, these, this fragmented learning. And um, the students were finding it, uh, the, the, the retention wasn't good. The students were finding it hard to see why they had to do all of these courses. So in this potentially fragmented landscape um, was my challenge. So when did the inquiry start? Well, I was handed a first year course. It was a first year field course at the end of the year. And it was a course where students were not progressing into second year geology, even though they were enjoying the course. So this was a challenge. And my inquiry began when there was a call um, from the Carnegie Academy for the Foundation of Teaching um, a call for proposals, not, not a telephone call, um, a call for proposals um, to join a project on what we call integrative learning. So helping students to make connections within the discipline and between disciplines. And this seemed like a solution or the answer to my uh, challenge. So I, I applied and joined the programme and began an inquiry into this challenge. And I just want to make the uh, and, and I just want to make the point in this chronology that I didn't go straight from postgraduate certificate courses into the masters. I had two or three years intervening where I really had an authentic challenge. I something that was really getting to me that I wanted to inquire into. I think if I'd gone straight into the masters course I may not have had that authentic challenge. So it's just something to think about uh, that if you're going to spend time really getting into something and changing your courses and investigating and collecting evidence, it has to be something that really um, kind of bugs you that you need to, to solve. So what is integrative learning? Well, going back, we always go back to Boyer's for scholarships. And the scholarship of integration, Boyer was urging us to research the connections within and between disciplines and to look at these intersections to bring new perspectives on what we're doing, to broaden our horizons and those of our students. And in the classic work from Huber and Hutchins, which inspired many of us here, 
Um, they say it's about connecting skills and knowledges and knowledge from multiple sources, from multiple experiences. It's about applying theory to practice. It's about uh, thinking of diverse and even contradictory points of view, about connecting up skills and knowledge. So all good things that um, help the student to build capacity to be an integrative learner. It's also about piecing together and aligning different approaches and models, different pedagogies um, in, into one course. So the overarching question that I had for my masters was how can I use a first year residential field course to promote students' integrative learning? And my first ideas about this actually were um, grew and enriched as I proceeded to do the inquiry. So I'd been given this field trip, this field course, and of course, traditionally, what was happening was we love to tell the story in the field as geologists. So people, not only in UCC, but in, in other institutions, were giving a lecture in the field to the students. So they're going out into this potentially rich laboratory and hearing a lecture about what they were looking at. And they would write all the notes quickly in their field notebook. And if they were neat and good writers, they got a good mark when it was handed in. But that wasn't really getting to the learning outcome. It wasn't helping them to feel like a geologist and learn the skills of a geologist. So what did I do? I essentially, to summarize, transformed the lecture in the field approach to the seminar in the field approach. And um, Huber and Hutchins would say that there are several pedagogies that promote integrative learning. The seminar, the learning community, the collaborative group work, um, problem-based learning, etc. So here we were transforming this into seminars in the field where the students worked together in groups and discussed what they were looking at and made their own observations and interpretations, guided by a leader. So I had to bring my colleagues on board and postgraduate teaching assistants so that we could do this small group work. And we did, just to, to, to help this along, we did pre-field work seminars on campus <coughs> and group work and research so that the students had questions they wanted to answer when they went into the field. Now, as the master's project uh, advanced, I, I came up with a series of sub-questions, and this is what happens. Your question becomes a series of sub-questions that, that help to, to drive the, um, the research. So by the end of the course, my feeling and my instinct was about the field course was that great learning went on, um, the engagement of the students seemed to be far greater, the voices of the students were heard, um, the faces were brighter, the quality of the work handed in was good. And for most of us, most of the time, that's what we observe. We might hand out an evaluation sheet at the end and that's it. But for a scholarship of teaching and learning approach, we have to look at the evidence and analyze the evidence and, and um, come up with conclusions and disseminate. So, a step further. So the analysis of, I, I collected so much data, everything that moved, I was collecting, everything that I could measure, I measured. I went a little bit too far, but um, so I would, I would advise focusing in a bit. But you need enough evidence to be able to triangulate maybe quantitative and qualitative evidence. And um, how am I getting on? Oh yeah, okay, good. So, um, what we, myself and my colleagues wanted to do was to reward what we value. So in the assessment, um, we, we had to, first of all, modify the learning outcomes to reward what we value. We had to assess those learning outcomes, and that's what we were talking about this morning. 
Um, and one of the things that we value was the participation and the attitude to learning of the students. Their participation in the group work, their facilitation of learning with their peers. And that's something that traditionally we haven't collected. We've marked the work they handed in, the product at the end of the course. And sometimes those students who facilitate the group work and the peer learning are maybe not the ones that get good marks because they haven't been writing it down um, as, as some of the others have. So we did, one thing that we changed was to reward attitude to learning. And that wasn't um, the easiest thing coming from the sciences, but scaffolding it and um, <clears throat> telling the students that we were doing this helped them to, it helped to encourage them to engage. So what did we do? We, we constructed criteria on what, what we observed as good attitude to facilitating the group work. So we wanted to reward, um, we, we built up a, a, a sort of rubric through several categories of, we could recognize concern with bringing the different pieces of learning together, resolving con conflicts in knowledge, um, see the need for planning, um, proposing, revising, solving, asking questions. So we had a, um, a rubric uh, for, the, for the students. And this was 10% of the mark for the module. And although a very small amount for a very complex issue, we felt that, in fact, the students did engage better um, knowing that. So I think perhaps what I should do is just maybe begin to conclude here about what, what did I find from this study. So apart from assessments and observations in the field, we had a focus group afterwards to try and find out more from the students about what, what they found that worked well for them in the field course, what could be improved, etc. So in conclusion, um, this first year um, geoscience field course, traditionally consisting of lectures in the field, was transformed into a series of seminars in the field, interactive, um, where everyone had a voice, uh, sharing, um, as Richard Gale puts it, there's some magic there, if it works well, um, where we're facilitating, letting people play with ideas, brainstorm, instead of just listening to the expert and writing down the notes. So what happened? Well, in the conclusions, we recognised and realised that the student voice had not been heard on previous field trips. It was a kind of silence. This time, the student voice was heard. So the field course was more about student learning, and this field course was much less about lecturer performance. Because in the past, we all love, as I said, to tell the story and perform. So we learned that students will do the learning and get engaged if they know the purpose of the work. In some activities, the student engagement and insight exceeded my expectations. So what I expected of them was exceeded. The students' favorite activities expressed in the focus group were the most challenging activities. And in the past, we had said, the students won't be able to do that in first year. But we challenged them, and they, they were up for it. We learned that student attitude should be rewarded. Attitude to learning is, is something that we value. This can help to change the attitudes to learning when we value it and they see that we value it. We learned that taking a risk in your teaching, do take risks in your teaching, and we were, we felt, myself and my colleagues, doing things a bit differently. The students are up for it. Much can be learned from a sim simple question. So in the workbook, we, 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 we weaved or wove in questions about student learning into the disciplinary work, helping students to begin to think about how they're learning and how they can do more peer learning, because they had 
in a questionnaire they'd expressed at the beginning of the field course, they were teacher dependent. They learned best from listening, from taking notes, etc. At the end of the field course, high up on the list was teamwork, brainstorming, learning from others. We learned that there are levels of integration, so integrative learning. Some students do better than others. Other students need more help, more guidance from the tutor. But students move between the levels. They're not always in the same category, depending on the, uh, the activity or how they feel. We learned we can engage students in being scientists. They can do the real work of scientists even in first year. We learned that in science, we need to give students time to reflect. And that's a word that we don't use a lot in science. But we can encourage them to reflect on what they're doing and begin to uh, know something of their own learning goals. They reported in the focus group that this course made students feel that we cared about them which was a surprising. But even doing inquiry into your course, students feel that you really do care about them. And we, call, we ask the students to be collaborators. I learned, bring colleagues along with you. Bring them into the course with you, because it's easier for them to get involved than just telling them we should do something differently. They may not be listening, but bring them into the course. And the course is still running with other people leading it now, but in a similar, a similar approach. And almost finished now, but if we, we also learned we must model what we want the students to, to do. If we don't make connections between, within and between disciplines, we can't expect the students to do that either. We can't expect the students to see the interconnectedness of science um, and the interdependency of the different disciplines in science. And we learned we have to allow students to take time to make connections. So take time, let them play, let them practice um, to, to, to get it. And so this high level of engagement within the field course showed us that students hadn't been challenged enough in the past. Now, one of the findings that has led to more research beyond the masters, because this, this always leads you on to more, is that we found there were some students who didn't always take the opportunities to make the most of what we were doing. We called it the ability action gap. They had the ability, but they didn't always turn it into action. And this has led us on to researching into um, aligning concepts that are also promoting integrative learning. So one of them is threshold concepts, which is something that's helping us to really look at the key concepts within our disciplines and focus the learning outcomes and the activities on those crucial concepts. And perhaps the final thing I'll say is that while Boyer stated there are four scholarships, what the various projects have done involved with integrative learning has shown that all four of Boyer's scholarships ask us to promote integrative learning. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks. 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 Thanks.